Um, this is how we, we do it. Okay. <laughs> Hanging out with the Heim girls in our respective homes in quarantine. How are you guys doing? Good. It's good. We're doing good. We're yeah. hanging in there, you know, one yeah. day at a time. Is it weird not being all together? Because you guys spend so much time together. I know, it's really yeah. weird. I mean, we don't live together, so it's like, it's more just like more me time. Like, nice. we're together all the time, but like now I just like have more me time. So like I have more time to play Candy Crush and Perfect. wear a face mask and watch A Real Housewives of New York. So I'm doing fine. Have you guys picked up any uh, new skills in quarantine or tried something that you haven't tried oh. yet? Yes, I'm a painter now. Oh my God, I love that. It's really a painter. Van Gogh. I'm Van, I'm Van Gogh. Artiste, I love it. Oh. I know. Artiste. Are, are you guys working on anything together right now while you're apart or are you kind of just taking this time to recharge? Yeah, I think we're trying yeah. to as trying. much as we can. I think. I think initially when quarantine started to happen, I think we were all just in shock and, and of kind of like everyone else was kind of watching the news and obviously start trying to stay creative and stuff. Um, but yeah, I think we're dipping our toe. Okay. Toes. Toes. Will, you know? I'm only uh -huh. dipping one toe. <laughs> You're like, I still have some books to read. I have some face masks. Of water. <laughs> I love it because I didn't even know what Zoom was before this, and now I feel like I'm like Zooming with everyone, friends, family, FaceTime, and doing like yeah. girl time happy hours. And I know you guys are friends with, like oh, Taylor yeah. Swift and Lord. Have you guys done a like happy hour with the girls? Well, yet? like the one thing that ever I keep seeing everyone doing is they know again, as you said, like you're new to Zoom. I'm like a very much like a Zoom virgin. Like I don't know <laughs> how to do Zoom, but like I see people putting cool backgrounds behind. Yeah. And I don't yeah, know. Yeah, how do you do that? I feel like my mother. I literally yeah. have my mother where I have to call like one of my young cousins to be like, how do you do the Zoom? Well, I'm super excited about your third studio album. So I kind of like chuckled the first time I heard the title, obviously Women in Music Part 3, because it's very tongue in cheek. And I wanted to know like when you came up, how, how did that title come up? And what are you kind of trying to say with it? I honestly just thought it was really funny when we came up with it um, yeah. and we didn't have a better idea so we were Interesting. just like, like all right I came in yell in a dream yeah yeah it yell in a dream came to me in a dream did it really? um, well I just kept on seeing the phrase I think we must have been invited to some sort of women in music event or something like I saw an invitation maybe and I just then I just had this dream that we actually called our album it because I kept seeing it in the dream and and it was really, I thought it was super funny, um, and it kind of felt like it, it, the album kind of felt. We, we did the album really quickly for us, at least. It was very spontaneous, and we didn't hold anything back when we were kind of coming up with all the songs and how we wanted everything to sound, and that also yeah. felt very kind of, fuck, like it had kind of like a fuck it attitude. We're like, whatever, yeah. works for me, let's do it. I've been a fan of yours for a while, but I, I feel like this feels different. Like it feels a lot more raw from like, you know, the drums, the guitars, and even just like your lyrics. So from your point of view, I want to know what's been the most different thing about making this album than the first two? I think it, the sonically, it sounds definitely a little bit more raw than what we've done before. And yeah. we released our song Summer Girl kind of on a whim because yeah. we wrote the song super quickly and because the song was called Summer Girl. And at that time it was June. We were like, we need to put this out now. We're not going to wait like a year to, to put this out. Yeah. And just the act of releasing something like writing and recording it and then just releasing it, you know, very quickly after that, it, it was very freeing. And that's that kind of emotion is what we kind of led with, with this album. We put out Summer Girl on a wimpy. On a wimpy. <laughs> oh, I like it. Oh, okay. <laughs> you just released your fifth song from the album called I Know Alone, and I'm loving it. Uh, I love the lyric in it, and I like relate to it so much. It's I know alone like no one else does. And I think a lot of people who yeah. are alone in quarantine right now are relating to I know. it. Talk about know. how that song came about. That was one of the first songs we wrote for the album. Um, and it was always going to be the next song we released after The Steps, uh -huh. like before quarantine was actually happening. and when everything was going down, it was like, whoa, this feels really specific to like what everyone's going through. 
I mean, originally it was a song about, you know, kind of going down a spiral of just feeling completely lonely and, and feeling like no one could, re- like no one could relate to the amount of aloneness um, I was feeling at the time. I love the video for it too. It reminds me of like when I was younger, me and my friends would like do choreographed dances in our backyard, like all summer long. And that's what it kind of reminded me of. And I was wondering, if, did you guys- That's what we're going that? for. That's Is exactly it? That's what we're going for for i mean I obviously up, you know we, we grew up with sd choreographing our life so <laughs> it really was just like how we were when we were kids but we also choreographed it with francis from francis and the lights it was and it was all done on zoom it was <laughs> zoom dance classes we, we literally at like three o'clock like for a week before we filmed it it was like dance class okay and one two three and we did it all on zoom and really made sure that we nailed down the uh the routine another one of my favorite songs you guys released uh is hallelujah and it's split up in three parts you guys each have your own verse very emotional like i i when i when listening to it i was like there's no way that you, when you guys wrote this recorded it and did the video that you weren't like emotional i felt i don't know why i felt that and i was curious if, if that was true, and if so, could you kind of talk about it, maybe like each of your verses as well? Totally. I mean, it was a, the, the writing of Hallelujah it actually came together super quickly. It was like, I think we just had a lot to say, and we kind of always wanted to write a song about family and being sisters since we are so close, and yeah. we're a close family. We decided to write our verses separately and like not even really talk about it and see like what that sentence kind of means to each of us, mm-hmm. and then kind of bring it together. Um, and so we each kind of spoke, speak about different things. I mean, for my verse, I had been, I had gone through a really tragic time when I was 20. I had lost one of my, my best friends Hmm. in the world to a tragic car accident with a drunk driver. Um, and it was the most devastating time of my life. And I honestly couldn't have gotten through it without my sisters. Like they were my rock Hmm. during that time. And my verse is pretty much about just saying like, I went through this really rough time, but I became a better person through it, even though it was Hmm. so awful and so tragic. My verse was speaking to the fact of, you know, being thankful that I have sisters that, you know, know what this business is like. This industry can be very isolating. And I just felt so lucky and feel so lucky that I, can do all this with my sisters. It's like such a special um, thing that we have. When I when I wrote my verse, I was kind of reflecting on um, what it's like to be on the road with chronic illness and autoimmune disease as a type one diabetic, hmm. um, and how difficult that is. Mm-hmm. Um, and how lucky I am that I have two sisters that keep it light. And like, when I'm feeling down, they're always there to like make me laugh. Or if like I have a bad day or a bad blood sugar, they're like, keep it moving. And you guys are touching on all these vulnerable topics. What else will we get from this album? Is there anything else that you're gonna touch on that you know fans may be surprised about? We, we really, when we were making this record, we were really, um, we really came into it being like, we need to push ourselves and like really not let anything go. Like we've talked about a bunch of things on this record that we would never have talked. We wouldn't have the confidence to talk about on any yeah. of the records when we were writing it. I mean, songs like 3 a.m., which even in the title, I think that you can understand that it's about a booty call. So, <laughs> but yeah, there's songs about like booty calls. There's songs nice. about letting go of the love of your life. It's been a we, while, two years. It's yeah. been a while. <laughs> Good. We have a lot to talk about. We have a lot to talk about. <laughs> So, a lot of emotions. Yeah. Well, That's awesome. Well, so excited about the album and the, re- the new release date, because you guys postponed it, is June... Yeah. 26. 26, okay. Yeah, that's Coming exciting. You. June 26, we're so excited. Yeah, I, I can't wait. Now. I'm excited too. Well, thank you so much, you guys. You. This is thank so you. fun. I'm so Stay excited. Together. What was that? Stay safe. Yes, Stay you too. Thank you so much. Thank you guys you are the best.